And uh, you are watching the number one podcast in the whole entire Eastern community. And I'm one of your hosts, Juanzo. And I'm your other host, Jean Paul Leg. And together we are. Robray. How's every single one of you? Welcome to NXT UK Review. A pretty good show. Like We got a lot of great announcements. Finally, we're going to see Walter and Dragunov number two is in the books. So we said it. You know, whoever won that triple threat match that was supposed to determine who runs the place, it was, you know, low-key a number one contenders match. So welcome to every single one of you. Paul, your thoughts about this show? Yeah, you know, pretty solid show. And like we always say about NXT UK, you know, they always build stuff in advance, you know, all these matches, well, most of them we saw tonight, we knew they were coming, we know the matches that are coming next week, they build the excitement and the anticipation for all these matchups and everything, and, you know, we saw uh, Blair Davenport, we saw her, uh, I guess, debut here, and then, and, then, yeah, and then we also saw, you know, a little bit more, you know, of a video package for the feud between uh, Mako Satamora. Satamora with a mail. Yeah, you know, we got mail, a lot yeah. of stuff, so we're going to be dissecting everything. Thank you to every single one of you that is watching the videos. That is giving us a place in your houses to just, you know, keep talking about what we love. Our passion, that is professional wrestling. Don't forget, you know, to support us with the AEW Dynamite Review. Malachi Black, Alistair Black, Tommy N, Tommy, you know, like the guy from the Power Rangers, however you want to call it. He debuted on AEW, Jean-Paul. The reason being for that, it was a clerical error. Of course, people will ask, what does that mean? Because, like, every single wrestler in the WWE main roster has a 90-day clause in their, you know, contract so they can go to another company. Guys from NXT, and in this case, Alistair Black was an NXT guy before going to the main roster. He had a 30-day clause. So that's why he was able to, you know, debut on Dynamite any, any, any more from the show, Paul. Yeah, I mean, you know, like we said, this really wasn't a bad episode. The strap match was, yeah, you know, that was all right. And the main event match, though, I mean, that kind of, you know, eh, like, like I didn't care about. But, the, I mean, this was good with Malachi Black. It's one of the things, though, it's just how many ex-WWE guys are they going to bring in? And are they going to do anything different with them? Or is it just going to be WWE light? You know, is it just going to be, hey, remember what you did in WWE? How about you do that over here, but you won't be on as big of a stage and you won't get paid as much. Or maybe exactly. they get paid more. So I'm, And Paul, you know, you ask how much, you know, 60% of AEW's roster mm -hmm. is WWE has a past. On the world wrestling entertainment. Yeah. Now, so and, and, the, and the one thing I will say to like, not to counter that, but I mean, so many people work for WWE. Yes. You're bound to have some, but it seems so desperate where it's like, it's like their 90 day no compete is over for two seconds and you're already, hey, do you want a job? I'm not, you know, not like, even, you know, like probably right before when they get released, it's like, hey, give me two months. I'm legit. You know, like, let me just get in shape. Let me get good to go. And then let me rock the house in your company. So that's what yeah. they did. Please watch that video, all the information, all the matches, every single move, outcomes is right there, family. NXT UK started, and we, what we said is going to be a great feud, and also great match, and also NXT UK always knows how to do it right for us, because Nathan Frazier and Kenny Williams, they had a pretty great match, and the right winner came out, out of this bout, Paul. Yeah, you know, I really like this. You know, you and I had both said it last week. We said that Frazier's the guy who, he's your future. He's your number one baby face, like, in the making right now. And he can afford a loss right here. Because to really get Kenny Williams over as a heel, as he said, the scum of the earth, everything, he has to get a win. And his win, you know, it did come, I don't want to say it came, like, in a scummy way or, like, a cheating way. But he definitely was, you know, kind of used, he was a heel, a little brutal in this match. You know, Frazier started out really good, like a house on fire. The only thing, early on, he did a big dive, like, I mean, like a Ray Phoenix dive, like, shot out of a cannon. And he almost completely missed Kenny Williams. And he popped right back up, even though he hit the, the floor pretty hard. Probably just he popped up to be like, no, I'm legit, I'm fine. Mm, but, I'm good. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure, you know, that still hurts. So, but then eventually, you know, Williams takes out the knee, then he really takes over and everything. But then we did see then at the end, you know, they're kind of on the apron. He gets the turnbuckle pad off and everything. And then, you know, pretty much hit, sends his head first right into it. Then he hits Knocks his big, out. uh, uh, flat, uh, not flat liner, but a face like, buster. Like, kind of like the flat, like a face yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a face first, like gold bad luck. So bad luck for Nathan Frazier. Good luck for Kenny Williams. One, two, three, he gets the win. And this guy loses. Come up the year. And like, he is like roaches, right? He can outpower, overcome anybody, only share. Those aren't the only ones that like will all like yeah, outlast, exactly. out, like, you know, a nuclear, you know, bombing or like a nuclear, like, you know, post stuff. So this was is good. And Kenny Williams, like you said, is like, he's solidifying himself as like a great heel. And now I think the most, significant spot for him now it should be tyler bates for the heritage cup 
Oh, yeah, he's got to move up to something like that. Um, but, I mean, this was still a really good opening match. And, you know, both guys, you know, they, they did their thing well. Like, hopefully, Frazier kind of sell, maybe sells the knee a little bit because he was really selling the knee during this match, like going off the top, landing, you know, oh, you know, the knee. I did like the one spot where I forget what he hit, but he did like a springboard, but he just used the one. He, like, jumped up and just kicked off the ropes with one leg. Because yeah. the other leg was, you know, he was selling He's the knee. Yeah, yeah. Like, he so. has to sell the injuries also. So good stuff on that. Good good attention to detail. Always has been one of your characteristics here on Road Break. Let's talk about these guys that we mentioned that, uh, you know, thank you for the person also that commented the name. I'm sorry, like, it just goes off my head. But, like, you know, Rampage Brown and Joe Coffey, they're saying, like, they're one, one piece. You know, they're title one. And they said, hey, you know what? Maybe are we going to be a tag team? Maybe that could be a situation. Or they're going to have another match with a different stipulation. They were going to talk about that. But that's it's Carl is like, hey, guys, you know, uh, uh, we should talk about this, you know, privately. So he's like, oh, okay, man, okay, mate, don't, boom, shut the door. They don't want us to know. But, like, this thing is going to keep going. And it's not bad because he's not overly done. Is that we want to see where, who's going to be the best man out of the two. Or in the end, like you said, hey, maybe we just want to be a tag because we're both strong. We're both like main event talent. So what, what do you think it's going to be? Yeah, I mean, I, I really think they're going to have another match. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I'd almost rather see a tag because, like we said, the tag division, you know, Gallus seems to just be doing their own singles division stuff. So it's like, okay, wasn't that Joe Coffey's wheelhouse? Now, you know, what is all three members of Gallus going to be in the singles division? No, I don't think so. So maybe they're going to do something like this. I hope it's not just another match because the way they're trying to be so secretive, like, oh, you know, let's talk in private, you know, oh, get out of here. Don't be bullshit, cameraman. I think it's got to be something big. But, you know, the, it, needs and, it needs to be. Otherwise, yeah. you wouldn't kick out of the camera. Yeah. And you got to do, you know, we, we both like Rampage Brown, but Joe yeah. Kolf, he's one of the top guys there, too. You got to do something with these guys. You got to do right by them. You can't be like, oh, they're our top guys. They're legit. And then they just lose. And then it's no, like, you know, they, no. And yeah. especially if they're going to do a title switch, we're going to talk in just a bit. You know, it can, you know, there's a, there's more possibilities that they can do. Talking about title opportunities, we got Mako Saramura, the NXT UK Women's Champion, and pretty much cutting a promo uh, with her, like her first opponent, that's going to be Amel. Amel saying that she's going to take the title away from Saramura. He said that that's the French hope. And, you know, you got to see like a pretty good, and I would say like heel turn for Amel. That's interesting because we didn't know anything about this girl, just like we'll be in the show and then we'll lose matches. But it's kind of good that like NXT UK is giving this girl an opportunity with the big boss. The, the, is she gonna win the? Is she gonna win the title? No, it's not gonna happen. Why? Because just Mako Saramora just won it. But it's good to, for her to just gotta rub, see how she's capable of, and especially a championship match that not every single girl has had in NXT UK. Yeah, and, and I like this. You know, I like you know, the Mel. She's just like, I've been disrespected since I got here. You know, over in France, I'm interviewed everywhere. I'm on every talk show. I'm on every TV station. You know, I'm a huge celebrity over there. I'm disrespected over here. Not going to put up with it anymore. I'm going to take what I deserve. And, like, I love when uh, Mako was just saying, yeah, you know, Kaylee Ray, you know, was legit. I beat her, all this stuff. But it's just like, you know, now I'm the champ. And then I like when they, they kind of, like, they don't ask her questions. But, like, you, she just, like, answers she's questions. Gonna get the match. Yeah, yeah, like just, she's just, like, yeah, yeah, she's just like, oh, you know, is she going to win this match? He's like, I'm not answering that. I'm Pretty much just like, like, no. Like, no. Don't be bullshit. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, let's go to, like, the next one. We're talking about championship goal, you know, and, like, subculture wanted an opportunity to go against the tag team champions, and that was, like, pretty deadly. So we got to see uh, here, you know, Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews, and in this case, Mark Andrews was going against Lewis Holly. And, you know, pretty good match. I think that, you know, Mark Andrews, like you said, is a little smaller or shorter than Ali, but, like, in the end, you know, pretty good stuff. Did we think that they were going to get the match? Probably, right? I, I think that, you know, they want to have the match, but I don't think the titles are going to change hands. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I mean, they're really push. I shouldn't say start out with unfortunately, but, like, they're really pushing subculture, which I, I do like them, but... I feel like we always see uh, Andrews and Webster in the title picture, whether they're the champs or whether they're number one contenders or chasing. You know, when, when NXT UK first started back up and they had all those tag teams come out, there was how many teams? We don't even see them no more. I mean, you nope. have, uh, we'll get to a little bit later on. There's like Ashton Smith, Oliver Carter, there's Tio Man and Raja. You know, there's these other teams, which hopefully... Subculture don't win. Lewis Howley, Sam Stoker can keep having a title ring because there's two teams right there you could feud with. You know, there's maybe going to be Joe Coffey and Rampage Brown if they did decide to do that or put Gallus back in or, you know, we're symbiosis. You know, they I thought they were going to be the tag champs. They kind of got screwed and now they're like an afterthought. But, you know, this match, I'm thinking, eh, 
you know, they might do it just to give, you know, these guys another big title defense, you know, over subculture, which I hope is the case. But they this pretty, yeah, this was good. I mean, Mark Andrews, we've seen him in a singles role before, like with the, when they had, the, when they had, the, you know, yeah, when they had this, the, uh, they had the UK uh, tournament. Like yeah. the first one to crown the champ, I believe he was in there and everything. Yeah, so, was. you know, this this was a good match. And, of course, you know, the heels, you had uh, Sam Stoker. He was out there helping out Lewis Howley. And then eventually they're like, oh, okay, you know what? No more of this bullshit. Then we saw uh, Johnny Web, Luna Web, got involved Webster in and Luna like came out. It kills yeah. it a little bit. Like you said, it kills it a little bit. And, and then like uh, just like um, at the end, like Stoker, he, I mean, he was going to hit all these moves, but you just had Andrews counter everything. He hits the big, what is it called? The Slumdog Millionaire, whatever exactly. they call it. Yep. Yeah, he and hits that freestyle. one, two, three. Yeah, and then you know the big splash like the three sixty, yeah. all of that, like really good. I don't know how uh, he. There's a name for it, like break point or something like that is what they call it. One, two, three, they get the win. And like you said, pretty much, uh, the so Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews, like subculture with Daniel, and they get a championship opportunity later on against pretty deadly. Hopefully, like you said, the champions retain because again, we've seen these guys with goal already, and there's more teams that they need to build. Unfortunately, like you said, for example, Imperium, the Grusium veterans, all of them left that they were like the top. Team your talent on that division but now only they have to build and you know sometimes it's going to be great sometimes it's not going to be as great and that's i think that's one of the things that is suffering in nxt uk and that's probably the only thing that is suffering so yeah. you know paul let's talk about a little bit of a jack stars you know a guy that like he's like the gatekeeper of nxt uk because that's all he's good for i mean he has the opportunities he looks good but i guess there's something's always missing from this guy so the guy's like hey you know keep doing what you're doing because the strategy is working at some point you're going to like strike goal you're going to get it. You know, you're going to like be able to get it. And then we got to see also Mastiff. Mastiff is like the same thing, man. You know, you're the gatekeeper of NXT UK. Everybody that comes in here has to measure up with you. And once they do it, they will be able, they will be worthy enough. And he's like, hey, I didn't call you. Like, I didn't ask you to record this. So, I mean, you know, like they're trying to make him look good. It's still a good baby face. But I think the heel turn is needed. That way he can take away all this like pity. Or, you know, like sympathy that people are giving. Yeah, I really think that like they're, they're piling, piling it on with this. Like at first with Tyler Bate, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, the, the, the former champ, you know, the big strong boy, you know, one of the favorites here is giving Jack Stars the rub, saying, no, you're legit, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then you have this trainer. And you have Dave Mastiff, who, no offense, is like has been presented as a loser the past couple of times we saw him. He hasn't, you know, so, you know, all these guys are like, oh, yeah, you're legit, you're legit, you're legit. Eventually, when you keep hearing that, but legit things don't happen to you, you start to get pissed off. You start to get angry. Is that, are people lying to me? You know, why do people say I'm so good, but nothing good happens, this and that? So, no, I think a heel turn's coming. I agree with you. And I think that will really do good for his character, too. Yeah, no, and that, that, that is something that it needs to happen. So we, we hope for like Jack Stark. It needs to happen so that, that way the character will be refreshed. And they need a little, one more heel that's not bad. It's to, talking about Tyler Bate, you know, like they actually asking about, you know, Mark Coffey. They said, like, remember, like, what is going to happen with this? And, you know, he says, I know what they're trying to do. Or they're trying to measure up to themselves, but like at my expense. So it's fine. Whatever it comes, you know, you know the answer. I'm going to give him the match. And at the end, I'm going to win. So good stuff for Mark, for like Tyler Bate. He will come out later on in the show. That's okay, you know. I mean, he's a prominent figure. And I'm pretty sure that, like, at some point, you know, if, let's say, Dragunov becomes the champion, like, I think they're going to collide. Tyler Bate and Dragunov because, like, they're the two best guys in this division. Yeah, no, I could easily see that match coming. And then also to, like, comment about that, I almost wish it was built up more... And it was Joe Coffey going after him. Because that would be like a real believable match. That would I could be easily see Joe Coffey being the NXT UK Heritage Cup champion, all that stuff. But, you know, we'll just have, I mean, maybe it's leading down that path. Maybe, you maybe, know, he'll beat exactly. Rampage or something. You know, we'll just have to wait and see. Exactly. So let's go to the debut of Blair Davenport or like Bia Priestley, however you want to call it. Blair Davenport for NXT UK fans. Bia Priestley for everybody outside of the WWE Cloud Universe, however you want to call it, against Laura DiMatteo. Pretty decent match, but see, this is how you present a debut. I will. I, I'm pretty sure you agree with me. You know, simple to the point. You know, like the 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 opponent didn't get a lot of offense, nearly as like anything as the offensive. And you know, pretty much Blair Davin for a lot of like Kenny Omega like style because I saw like ten thousand B triggers and a few like moves, and that was it. So like in the end, she gets the win. So what do you think? Yeah, I mean, this wasn't bad. I actually think. Uh... Uh, Di Matteo, you know, or was it Laura Di Matteo? Yes. Yeah, the, she, she actually looked pretty good in this for like a quick, I don't want to call it a job match because she did have some good offense in, like she hit, you know, like a, like a DDT, you know, suplex and stuff, you know, she's good. She's another one who, 
you know, she's talented too for just being like the enhancement talent. Oh, you know, just go in there four minutes, you know, get Davenport over. Oh, okay, legit. You know, no, but I, you know, she looked good too. But like you said, once, you know, Davenport and kind of slowed things down, she had like a springboard kick or knee or something. Yes. And then, like you said, the big, she grabbed the arms, pulled the head in, does like the, almost like the V trigger. You know, it, it, it looks as intense as Kenny. So I don't know what that says about Kenny, but, uh, you know, they, I mean, she, she hit this, you know, one, two, three, and, you know, Pretty good win for win. her. Yeah, and then yeah. she she pretty much cut a promo just saying how, like, she's the best, everything. You know, she's going to put all these women on notice from the top, Mako Satamora, all the way down. You know, she's coming for all of them. She's better than all of them. And I think, you know, this will be I, – I don't know if she's going to win it when, you know, she's first going after – Mako Satamora, but this would be something cool. Maybe you see like a number one contender match or something between her and uh, Eva Valkyrie. That That's might right. Be cool that was, because that's the you know, I was going to exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm, I cannot wait to see this too. Blair and Eva, because this is going to be gold and gold on the ceiling, like the Black Keys will say, because it was absolutely amazing. I'm just looking forward to see these two fight. Like they both have great wrestling ability. The styles are good, and you know the characters are a little you know dark on both sides. This is going to be amazing. So talking about Eva Valkyrie, they got a promo because she has a feud with Jeannie right now. This is going to be like to set her ready for like, uh, I think for like Blair Davenport. You know, like they need Jeannie. She's a good heel. Unfortunately, that's all she is. She's, is she ever going to be champion? I don't think so. You know, like she doesn't have like, she's not as good as like Eva, as like Davenport, as Mako. Even like, even like uh, Mackenzie is even, I would say a little bit better in the ring. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but at least that's how I feel. But like they had this great picture because Jeannie was cutting a promo about her. And she said, you're just a girl. You know, you're just trying to be all like dark or like private or like, you know, like mystique, intriguing. But once Mako like beat you, it's like all of a sudden it's like, oh, everybody's like, it gets in your psyche and then everybody just can beat you up. I love this picture. What do you think of the promo? Yeah, I mean, the promo is good. I actually like Ginny as a heel. You know, I like I said, she almost kind of reminds me of like a Charlotte vibe a little bit. Just how she thinks she's so much better than everybody else and everything. But, uh, I mean, this this is good. This is a good first feud. I obviously think Valkyrie's going to go over. you got to build her up. And to touch on a point we just mentioned, I think, you know, if she does have a match with Bea Priestley and, you know, or uh, Blair Davenport, if they're going to really do that, I almost think you got to put Davenport over and that she's got to go against Mako, and then maybe she's the one who beats Mako. Because then you can at least have a heel versus baby face instead of two baby faces. Because if it's Mako and uh, Valkyrie, that'll be two baby faces. Which, no, yeah, I, I mean, it her. won't be a bad match or anything, and it could be a way for her to get her win back. But I really think they are going to push Davenport, because it's like you're not going to bring her in from Japan, do all this stuff, and then just be like, ah, yeah, you're just going to lose, and then just kind of float around here. It was probably like, one of yeah. the stipulations that they will add, you know, so I agree with you, absolutely. But this is or, it, or, it could, or it could be, you know, your favorite, the, the triple uh, uh, threat. I will be a threat, and I wouldn't be upset, but like, you know, knowing NXT UK, like, you know, how they... Oh, yeah, but remember, all the, remember all the triple threats we saw? Tony Storm, Kaylee Ray, oh, yeah, Hyper Niven, it, and then it, it's like... Oh, like so, so maybe, like, oh, you, you wouldn't be, you know, right, you know, you wouldn't be wrong by saying that, so maybe, like, in that one, maybe Maker retains, and then they have the one, you know, one-on-one yeah. face of even with, like, Davenport or with, like, Valkyrie, so that was gonna be good. This is also even more amazing, because, like, I like, you know, the old-school fashion that he has, like, the Renaissance vibe, you know, the European classic style that like yeah. Neil Man has I absolutely love that that's so classy for me and you know we only live in America no criticize to that but like this kind of like the way that the, the clothes and everything is completely lost here is more you know liberal more open and then he's just talking about family talking about Raja is like you know you show me that you're family it's kind of like it reminded me how you and me like became Robrick so it was like a really great promo you know it's like oh you know you stood out by me I'm gonna stood out by Wait, you so, so what's that you, you, you beat the shit out of me in the ring and broke by no, arm no, and then the I was like way. oh Oh, it's okay, the other okay, way around, okay. you know. Let's uh, let's book it legit, you know. It's oh, not, okay. you know, it's not like AEW, you know. No, the short man doesn't beat like it's not David against Goliath. It doesn't happen that way. But really legit, you know, like going back and forth between Raja and also like all oh, like Theo man. And then in the end, he's like, "Are you gonna be legit?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be legit. I'm gonna stand by you as long as you stand by me because they're gonna go against, you know, like tell me the names, you know, tell me the names." Paul, oh, like, it was, was a- Ashton Smith, Oliver Carter, and Oliver Carter. They said yeah. that they're gonna have a, ma- a match next week, and like you said they're a tag team now. And you know, like Raja plays in it all, like the loyalty and everything. And this picture is just great. You know, like the old school vibe. What do you think? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm completely I mean, in love with this tag team. Yeah, you know, I, I like it. I like it. I but the thing you touched on where you said like, oh, like in America and like the thing, you know, not just like like more liberal and stuff. But I'm like, I feel maybe like people in the UK watching this and other people will be like, 
oh, this is good. But then I feel maybe just like modern wrestling fans, younger fans, whatever watching this, they'll be like, what is this? This is weird. I don't. So I, I'm kind of like not leery or nervous, but I'm, I'm hoping T.O. Man gets over because I like it as well. But I think some people might watch and be like, this is weird. I don't get it. Like, what is this supposed to be? Yeah. Um, I, lo- I love the shot when they show the whole table. You know, go, go to that picture again. That I want to see that whole table be filled up. Yeah, I want to see him have this whole a entire faction. family. Faction. Yeah, but I've essentially just the faction, like yeah. a group. I want to see that. I think that would be cool, especially if you can somehow, you know, put gold on, you know, Teal Man or something like that. Even if he's the Heritage Cup champ and he has that big, you know, cup sitting right there at the table, you know, right next that to him on the table. You know, yeah, I mean, that would be cool. Even the belt, too. I don't, I don't think they'll go that far, at least not yet, you know. But, you know, the Heritage Cup or something might be cool. But I do like this, you know. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm, I, I think they're going to go over Carter and Smith. You have to, to get these guys over. And then we'll see where they go from there. Exactly. So, Paul, you know, like, biggest news of NXT UK of this show. Two weeks from now, we're going to see Dragunov and Walter, too. You know, for the NXT UK Championship, we're going to see finally Walter defending this championship in one of the best matches. If not for us, it was the best match of 2020. It was. Yeah. There, there was no way that you can actually, you know, uh, go against that. That's fact. You know, there's no way that you can actually criticize or, or, you know, go against that, counter that statement. So I'm excited about this. And actually, I think we're promised to, like, have a brand new NXT UK champion. I mean, I, I almost think we have to at this point. Because I don't really know what their plans are with Walter, what they want to do with him, you know, whether it's go to NXT on Tuesdays, whether it's go to the main roster, whether it's take time off, you know, who, who knows what the plans are with Walter, but this is another match, like we said, you know, last night on the review with uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman. You can't keep doing these matches if this guy's your future champion. He's your, you know, one of your biggest stars. You can't keep giving him the title match and having him lose. Exactly. So you know, and and to but and to do it so quick, that kind of made me a little nervous to be like, ooh, you know, I don't know, is is he really gonna win it? You know, are they just going, oh yeah, in two weeks, and then he loses, and it's like, oh okay, moving on. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, oh here's Rampage Brown again, or here's you know this guy or whatever. No, I'm but. Next week, they're going to have a sit-down in the ring, maybe a contract signing. I don't know if he actually said that. I think he just they said, like, a sit-down. They didn't say contract signing, just a sit-down, so it's good because they yeah. don't go on, like, main roster path, you know. Why do every match need a contract when they know that, like, the contract is already pre-signed? Or, like, you know, you know what I mean. Like, it's, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, the only time you should have to sign a contract is if it's for, like, uh, kind of like a stipulation or something. Like, or like oh, we're going inside, you know, like, like, a career yeah. ending yeah. or something like yeah. that. Exactly. So, like, but, you know, it's great news. We knew that was going to happen. As soon as, like, Dragunov beat in the triple threat, we knew that that was going to be the path so excited for like like you said hopefully he wins because if it doesn't we're going to be it doesn't matter how much we love walter it's like come on dude like just give just give the damn bell you know you're not san martino you're not you know bob Bucklin, you're not one of those give the damn bell so you know yeah. Paul, let's go to like the main event in this eddie dennis i guess mm, mm, mm. you know trend seven the founding five do it do it, do it. there you go do it, do it. Mm, mm, mm. there you go that's our guy, and, like, pretty good match. Unfortunately, Eddie Dennis, despite how good he is, you know, he's about the tall, like, the height, like, the ability, quick, fast, skinny. You know, he falls for, you know, for, like, I guess, like, they love the founding father of NXT UK, Paul. Yeah, they, I mean, the only thing I don't like about a match like this is, you know, neither one of these guys, it, like, this win doesn't mean anything for them. Especially, you know, whoever would have won this. Obviously, we know Trent 7 won. We just watched it. But it's like, you know, you look at these two guys. Nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened with uh, when he was leading uh, Primate and Boar. Nothing ever happened when he's leading T-Bone and Primate. You know what I mean? You, didn't, you don't do anything with these guys. You don't capitalize on them. So that sucks. Trent 7, did he win the Heritage Cup? No. Did he beat uh, Jordan Devlin for the, for the Cruiserweight? No. no. You know, there's all this stuff. You know, did he feud with Tyler Bate and win the Heritage Cup from him? No. no. At least not yet, but probably never. You know, so it, it sucks, but this was a really good match. I mean, I love, like, the Emerald Flosion. He kicks out of that. And, you know, I mean, they just beat the hell out of each other because there's a lot of, you know, there's passion between these guys he's like oh you know you beat the hell out of me you know then i almost did your career when i i think he broke his collarbone or something yeah, yeah. so you know these guys have a lot of like i mean obviously it's all like a work you know but they have a lot of heat with each other and stuff so i mean they really brought the intensity out in this match it was really good 
And then, yeah, you what know, is it? The, the, it's not the bull hammer. It's something like that. Oh, the burning hammer. The burning hammer. There you go. Yeah. Like the burning hammer. And but like the one thing like to mention is that you got to see T Bone and also like Primate there. Yeah. And like they they didn't like they didn't interfere. Most the only thing they did is like put like the like you said like the food right there. But then instead of like causing a DQ, they let Trent Seven actually win the match, and then they start attacking him. All of that, and then Tyler Bay showed up. Tyler Bay also cleaned house, and he actually put out the nunchucks. So he believes he's Michelangelo and John Paul of that. So like, oh, that's yeah. legit. But, you know, in the end, it's like Mustache Mountain are going to feud with, like, all of them. With, like, you know, uh, Eddie Dennis and Primate and T-Bone and Symbiosis. So uh, are they going to, like, intertwine in feuds here or what's going on? Yeah, that's the one thing I want to say. I mean, I, I do like the ending se uh, sequence, too. Like, when he hit the, the what, is, what is it called? Splash Mountain, like the Razor's Edge. Yes. And then he went for the Seventh Star Lariat. And then, actually, Eddie Dennis hit, like, a big Lariat and everything. You know, I mean, it was a good, kind of just, like, a good ending sequence there. I like this. But then, like you said, Tyler Bate came out, you know, Michael doing his best Michelangelo impression with the nunchucks, chasing them all off and everything. You know, they, you know, beat down the heels after this. It what it should have been a thing where, and I know the heels were out there, so of course you know the numbers game they would have beat up Trent Seven, but that's what I touched on earlier. It's like Trent Seven or Eddie Dennis, it don't matter. When they win this, they just get overshadowed because it's like Tyler Bate came out and made the save. Oh, everybody's gonna talk about oh Tyler Bate with the nunchucks, exactly. badass. Nobody gonna you know, say oh Trent Seven had a great match. So yeah, it's I just sure. they, they these guys they get overshadowed, and that's this thing that kind of sucks. And but, not saying anything, know. but Paul, remember how legit for Trent Seven looked before like the match with uh, Jordan Devlin. Am I seeing a little bit of a god right there? Or is uh oh, well, well, that's the one thing too, which uh, I'm I'm not gonna poke fun. You know, we all gained the quarantine weight and everything, but uh, you know, he was two oh five for uh the match with Jordan Devlin ass. for the match with Jordan Devlin, and then at this match they said weighing in at two hundred and fifteen pounds, and I'm like, eh, I could say maybe two twenty five. I don't know about two. Oh, like you know, like that. That's what like that fifteen is right there in the gun. No, no, we love Trent Seven, we love Marcus Mountain, and we love our guys. Yeah, but we can poke fun. You know, it's nothing. You know, not to like degrade anybody, not to be negative. It's just a little bit of fun. You know, if you don't say yeah. anything like that, you know, like oh my God, people are gonna like start like you know going mm -hmm. against us. No, it's just a you know, quick joke. Nothing, you know, nothing personal here. But like you said, Monsters Mountain get the win, but like he's, he's still being the bridesmaid, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, and it, a feud with Symbiosis, so what? They go over? You know what I mean? And then you just uh, bury Symbiosis? Mean? Yeah, what? I mean, and if Symbiosis wins, does that mean Eddie Dennis or somebody's going to get a match against Tyler Bate for the Heritage Cup? You know, this is this should be in the tag division. If you want to have Symbiosis, put them in the tag division. You want to do Mustache Mountain again? Put him in the tag division. Take that cup off Tyler Bate. Put it on somebody like a Kenny Williams or a Nathan Frazier or T.O. Man or somebody like that. So like that somebody that is actually a singles that can actually run with the title. Absolutely right, Paul. But despite all of that, a great show, a great episode of NXT UK. The best show on, you know, WWE. So, family, thank you so very much for being with us one more time. Don't forget to subscribe for the new ones that are seeing us. Hit the bell for notifications and also hit that like so the video goes like, you know, Grimes will say to the moon. And don't forget, tomorrow live, I'm calling myself WWE SmackDown. What's going to happen with Jimmy? I drink a lot Uso. Three times, you know, in like two years. Again, not poking fun of the guy, just stating facts. Yeah, also, just coffee, people. Yeah, stick, coffee. Stick you know, coffee. Joe Coffee, Mark yeah, Coffee. And exactly. also, don't forget, this is going to be also in like a newest outlet. It's going to be on Twitch. So for everybody that's watching Twitch, we're going to put a link so they can start following us there because we're going to have gameplay also. Jean Paul is going to be doing Minecraft, doing like Call of Duty, like Grand Theft Auto, all of that. And also, old school gaming. That's when I jump in also to help Jean Paul, Ninja Turtles, all of that contra robocop all of the legit games you know like that makes us like a gamer for life so where else can they find us Paul? and then make sure you follow us rope break on facebook the og rope break on twitter original rope break on instagram and of course right here on youtube the home of the number one podcast in the youtube wrestling community the original rope break have a great night we'll see you then and you and me have one more thing that is left to say and that is uh, uh...